Hello students, welcome to Code with Vene. ISC Computer Science Practical Examinations are around the corner and in this video I will be giving you some tips and advice to score maximum marks in the examination. By the end of this video you will know about things which leads to addition or deduction of marks in the ISC Practical Examination. So without further ado, let's begin. The practical examinations can essentially be divided into five stages. These stages are algorithm, the Java program, the documentation, hard copy and execution and testing. Let us see what is expected from a student in each of these stages and do's and don'ts which must be kept in mind. The first stage is algorithm. Here you will be assessed on the choice of algorithms and the implementation strategy. That is how you are solving the problem and whether or not the approach is efficient. Efficient is the op operating word over here. For example, if you are testing for prime numbers and you are actually counting the number of divisors and testing it against two, that's not a very efficient method. Though the answer will be correct in this case, but in classes 11th and 12th, you are supposed to em employ a more sophisticated approach. For example, in this case, 2 is the only even prime number so that you can check for 2 separately and then start the division from 3 up to the square root in steps of 2 that is first divided by 3 then by 5 then by 7 and you are not supposed to go beyond the square root of the given number. So this is actually an efficient approach. The other aspect is the presentation and the algorithm must be complete and clearly expressed such that it is language agnostic and any programmer should be able to code the logic by reading the algorithm. So let's talk about the do's. So you should think about efficiency before you code the first solution which comes to your mind. Give it a moment and try to think if it's possible to do the task in hand in a better way. Think if a nested loop may be replaced by a simple loop or an if-else ladder can be replaced by an array. Now problems asked in boards usually revolve around certain common things like efficient prime numbers, efficient bubble sort where you can abort the sorting as soon as the, as the elements are in order, using a single loop for assessing the diagonal elements of the 2D array or sorting of a 2D array in place without using another array etc. You may consider watching my playlist for pragmatic ISC problems for many of these approaches. I will be sharing the link in the description below. Now let us talk about the don'ts. Now the don't, the most essential don't is avoid mixing the pseudocode and the stepwise styles. Choose one of the two and be consistent with the choosing one. Another thing is do mention the variable names when referring to any operations. So that the context is always clear. For example, say increment the counter c by 1 instead of increase the counter. If you are using stepwise algorithm, then avoid using Java specific things like system.out.print etc. Just say display. However, loops, arrays, if else etc. are pretty much standard across all languages and may be used. So this completes the algorithm stage which carries three marks. Also keep in mind that the mistakes in this part may also result in the deduction of marks at the other stages that is the output and the hard copy etc because the program depends on the logic. Next stage is the program itself. Here you will be assessed on the knowledge of input requirement and the choice of data type. For example, if the question says enter a number and you are required to find the number of digits then don't enter a string and use the length method as it's expensive in terms of memory and time. Remember that strings internally use a char array. The second thing which you will be judged on is whether or not you are using proper object oriented methodology. For example, whether you are dividing your program into logical modules or not. So even if you are not using proper objects and classes, do divide the programs into logical modules that is functions and avoid writing everything inside the main because you will be judged on clear description of classes and function behavior and return type. Now let us talk about the don'ts of this stage. So do not use your own prompts and messages 
and input output must be formatted as per the question which means like for example if the question says n equals to and then you are expected to type the number so you should also say n is equal to and then you type the number don't say please enter an integer or some other message the input and output should be as per the question also ensure that the program follows the algorithm correct, correctly and is logically correct. The programming stage carries 5 marks in total. Next stage is documentation. The documentation stage is perhaps the most neglected and heated stage among the students. However, it is also the simplest. You are expected to use mnemonic names for identifiers that is short and descriptive names like a method should be named is prime instead of test. A counter can be called leap count instead of C. You are supposed to comment important segments of the code but do not overuse the comments and avoid the temptation to code each and every line of the code. I have seen students commenting each closing braces also which is definitely not required. The stage carries two marks and you should write the variable description as well. The next thing is hard copy. Students are expected to include the listing of the program and the input and the output. The do's are always include all test cases and a few cases other than the ones mentioned in the paper. Ideally these should be border cases or extreme values like very large values or small input values or in the cases in which you are supposed to get errors and all. Another thing is do not give unindented code that is the code should be properly tabbed and the easiest way is you can use the auto indent feature which is available in most of the IDEs like in BlueJ you can press Control shift i to automatically indent the code which makes it look better. Now let us talk about the last stage which is execution and testing. The last stage is execution and, and testing and it carries two marks. Please note that even though it carries only two marks, it implies that there were mistakes in other sections due to which you are not getting the correct output. The do's are check the program for all the given test cases and also check the, the program for the extreme boundary cases and make sure that all of these are included in the listing as well. And last but not the least, do not fudge or manipulate the program to get correct result by testing for specific input cases and displaying the desired output. Please note, visiting examiners are experienced teachers who are doing this for quite a long time and they can detect something fishy by just a glance at your code and usually it is looked down upon and reflect poorly on you. So never ever try to use unfair means or, and, and fudge the program or manipulate the program in any way. So getting correct result is the minimum requirement to score good marks in the practical. In order to secure 100% marks, your presentation must be flawless. And if you follow the do's and don'ts that I have listed, I'm sure you'll be able to score full marks in the practical. If you have any question or doubts, feel free to use the comment box. Thank you.